Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, uh, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. Today's video is actually a case that one of you guys requested down in the comment section here recently, and I went to go research it, and I was like, oh yeah, we're gonna be talking about this. This is the story of Amina and Sarah, two sisters. Some of y'all may have grown up in very strict backgrounds or very with very strict parents. Maybe some of y'all have parents or you and your family, y'all have very strong cultural beliefs where there's just certain things that you do not do no matter what, right? Like you're 45 years old and you still don't cuss in front of your parents or, you know, maybe even more religious things that is just you don't do in your home at all. Well, that is kind of how Amina and Sarah grew up, except for their father's beliefs took it to a much further level. But let's just start at the beginning. Yasser Saeed was born on January 27th, 1957 in Egypt. He came to the U.S. on a student visa in 1983 and became a permanent resident in 1987. He worked as a taxi cab driver and Yasser married an American woman named Patricia in February of 1987. Before we go any further, I did want to stop and thank today's sponsor, Factor. Factor makes meeting your nutritional goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Factor's team of gourmet chefs create each meal using only ingredients with integrity to help you feel your best all day long. Are you too busy during the day running around to stop and think about lunch? Well, you can keep your energy up with lunch to go, effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go. No microwave wave required. And if you need to refresh your healthy eating habits, you can do that with Factor. You can choose from 34 different flavor packed dietitian approved meals that are ready to eat in just two minutes. And Factor is now owned by HelloFresh, so you know they have the best, most tastiest meals. And I love switching between Factor and HelloFresh. If you want to try Factor, all you got to do is go to factor75.com or click the link down in the description box and use my code Christina Randall 50 and you can save 50% off of your first box today. Yes, just go to factor75.com or click the link in the description box. Use my code Christina Randall 50 and you can save off of your first box today. Thanks again, Factor. When Yasser married Patricia, he was 30 and she was 15, okay? And I seen Patricia's sister saying that she flipped out when she heard that her sister was marrying this man. Patricia, however, would later go on to say that she was never in love with Yasser, that she just wanted to get away from her family's home because they were very poor. They didn't have much at all. They barely got by. And she thought that he was rich because he owned all this property or land in Egypt and he had come over here from another country and promised her the world. And she thought that, well, I mean, at least I'll have stability with him. Patricia was raised good old Southern Baptist and she was very interested in Yasser's religion and his culture from where he was from and how important it was to him. After they got married, they ended up having two daughters and one son. Son, Amina, Sarah, and Islam. According to friends and family, Sarah was more academic. She was more of the tomboy. And Amina, on the other hand, she was like the more girly one, the social butterfly, the one that had lots of friends. But even though the two girls' personalities differed in those ways, Amina and Sarah shared a bedroom and they were best friends. They literally did everything together. They shared each other's 
secrets. They were there for each other. They brushed each other's hair and they loved each other so very much. Yasser had promised Patricia a life of luxury and Patricia said it was at first, but about six months into their relationship, things changed. Patricia said that her new husband, Yasser, became very controlling. I mean, very controlling and also began to push her around. Yasser also started to let it come out that he actually hated her family because of where they were from here in America. Patricia would also say that she would catch him in all kinds of different affairs and like literally six different a full on affairs she caught him with. But Yasir wasn't just pushing around Patricia. He was the same way with his two girls, Amina and Sarah as well. And it was even reported that he took his touching to the furthest level. And it was even said that he had messed with them in unspeakable ways. A police report was filed about the essay and the girls did give detailed statements to them. However, when the state decided that they were gonna prosecute him, Patricia, their mother, allegedly brought the girls back into the police department and had them tell the investigators that they lied about everything and they made it all up. Lots of the family members that knew them said that Yasir's son, Islam, the two girls' brothers, was treated completely different than Sarah and Amina. I mean, he was treated like the heir of the family, that he was so much better, like he had, you know, worth, and the girls were treated more like their mother. Yasser would often spy on his daughters by video or audio recording them without their knowledge. Sometimes he would even film them and make crude comments about them. This is illegal. Do I videotape you when you're sleeping? Well, look at this ice. I broke my eye on you. I'm gonna get sick now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, turn it off, Dad. Nice legs. <laughs> <laughs> I got this. Mm. Take this blanket from this one in the back. No! Go. No! Get away! Yeah. No! Get out! And then when Amina was just 16 years old, her father took her over to Egypt, allegedly to arrange a marriage with his much older friend. However, Amina rejected him. When they got back from their trip, it is said that Amina started emailing friends, telling them that she thought her father had planned to end her. And around this same time, Amina's sister Sarah had actually got a job after school working at a convenience store. However, she would later find out that her father was videotaping her while she was at work too. Like he was all consumed, obsessed with basically stalking his own daughters. He even videotaped her while he had her sister in the car with him and began to say that she was smiling too much at the customers at work. She smiled to the customers. Bella, she has to, part of her job. She's in trouble. The girls felt very trapped. They did not know what to do and they really didn't know anything different. They just really didn't know what to do. They were definitely not allowed to have boyfriends. I mean, again, he's up there videotaping their his daughters while they're trying to work or, or doing other things, trying to arrange a marriage in Egypt to his older friend. So he was completely controlling over his daughters. However, Amina, had a crush on a guy and she began to secretly like have her little boyfriend. His name was Joseph Marino and she met him while she was at her Taekwondo classes. We both felt like what we had was very real and it was very, very much worth fighting for. She walked in and I was like, oh man, who was that girl? And I was, I was immediately attracted to her. It didn't take much time for us to start a relationship, a serious relationship and went from, hey, I like you, to I love you. Amina fell in love with Joseph. He made her so happy and made her feel less alone. However, she quickly began to feel very anxious about her relationship with him 
because she knew her father was watching her. She even began to sneak and meet Joseph so she could spend a little time with him in different places, but she was paranoid because she believed that her father was literally watching her with binoculars. Can you imagine? You're going to the mall with, you know, a friend or whatever, and you cannot even relax because every stuffed animal, you wonder if your dad is hiding behind it, you know, with binoculars or anybody with dark features that looks like him. You're about to have a panic attack. I mean, it had to be a miserable teenage life for these girls in that way. Amina even told Joseph not to call or text her unless she sent a code word to him because she was afraid that her father would go through her phone. Eventually, their father found a note that Amina had wrote Joseph. When he went up to confront Amina, this is when she said that she was writing these notes to an imaginary friend. However, he did not buy it and he was in raged. I can't imagine how scared she was. He was going off. Her father was trying to get the name of Joseph out of her. However, she was so afraid that if her father found out Joseph's name, that he would find him and harm him, that she refused to give her father his name while he struck her over and over and over again. But she wouldn't tell him that it was Joseph. So Yasser decided to pack up the whole entire house and his family and move everybody 20 miles away into another little town in a new house over this. Because of this, Amina made plans to run away with Joseph, get married in Las Vegas, and start a new life. Joseph dropped out of high school to get a job and start making money so that he could save up enough to help Amina leave. And after Christmas in 2007, Amina and Sarah ran away with their mother, Patricia. They all packed up and went to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where Amina's boyfriend, Joseph, had family at. Now, they were actually really happy for a while, but Patricia, the mother, started having second thoughts, felt bad, and reached out to their father, Yasser. The girls didn't know it. And this is when Patricia, again their mother, told her daughters that on December 31st was her mother, which was the girl's grandmother's, death anniversary, and that she wanted to drive back home to put flowers on her grave. She promised the girls they wouldn't have to stay with their father. However, once they got back in town, Patricia told the girls that they were going to the house and that they were going to be staying there with Yasser their father. Now, Sarah reluctantly agreed. She said, okay, if you think it's going to be safe, if you think it's going to be fine, and dad's not going to be too upset, too mad, I'll go. But Amina flat out refused. She said, I'm not going back there. I'm not going to, she was terrified. She said, I'm going to go stay at my friend's house. And that's what she did. And then a few days later, Patricia drove to this friend's house where Amina was and began to pound on the door, like pound on the door. Amina, come out, come out, come out. When she finally got to speak to Amina, she told her that she needed to come home. She had to come home. Her father had forgiven her and that she needed to come home and be around the family. And Amina refused. She did not want to go. On the following day, January 1st of 2008, Yasser told the two girls that he wanted to take them out to dinner to make amends. Like he had had a change of heart. He wanted to sit down and speak to them. He missed his daughters. He loved his daughters. And just come to dinner with me is what he said. So the girls, probably feeling guilty at this point, thought we can just go to dinner with him. And I, I would have to just guess that, you know, Sarah, who was staying at the house, talked to Mina and like, come on, I've been with dad. You know, he seemed, he's cool. He's not super mad. And Amina feeling bad. Okay, I'll go. Now, Patricia, the mama, said she wanted to go. She asked to go, she wanted to go, but Yasser said, no, I need to be alone with my two daughters. I need to go with them, just me and them, so I can speak to them. So Patricia stayed at home. However, tragically, Yasser had no intentions on making amends with his daughters or telling them that he had forgiven them or that he was wrong or that he had had a change of heart. He actually drove the two girls in his taxi cab some distance away and he pulled out a fire where he struck Amina twice with it and she passed away instantly and then turned it on Sarah where he shot it nine times. Sarah miraculously was able to call 911 before she passed away and this is the 911 phone call right here and it is very chilling so if you don't want to listen to it skip to this time right here. What's going on ma'am? I'm dying, that was over. Ma'am, are you still there? Ma'am, are you still 
God, if she's telling me she's dying. Yasir's taxi was soon discovered by another cab driver outside the service entrance of Omni Los Colinos Hotel. The cab in our cab stand doesn't appear that there's a driver, uh, but there are two people inside the cab, one in the uh, passenger seat and one in the rear of the vehicle. Uh, one of the people in the, in the passenger seat looks like she's hunched over and she has blood coming from her ear. It doesn't look like they're alive to me. I understand that. We've got our officers in route. Now, after the slaying of his two beautiful daughters, poof, he disappears. He disappears for years. It was initially assumed that he fled to Egypt, but nobody could ever prove it. And then Patricia went on to file for divorce in 2009. Alleged sightings of Yasser driving a taxi in New York City and also in Newark, New Jersey, prompted the FBI to issue a statement suggesting that he could be in one of those areas. And then on December 4th of 2014, Yasser was added to the FBI 10 most wanted fugitives list with a $100,000 reward for any information leading to his arrest. On August 14th of 2017, a break came in the case. A maintenance worker at an apartment complex in Bedford, Texas, where Yasir's son Islam rented an apartment, reported seeing a man matching his father's description inside of Islam's apartment. When detectives showed him a picture of Yasir, the worker confirmed, yep, that was him. And at approximately 6.30 p.m. that evening, an agent came into the apartment to interview Islam, and Islam was initially very upset. He did not want investigators in his apartment rummaging through his stuff, searching to see if his father was there. However, investigators did get a search warrant and by the time they went there and searched the apartment, Yasser was gone. The police observed a sliding glass patio door open and below the patio, they also noticed a shrub with broken branches, suggesting that someone had jumped off the patio and landed onto the bush. Next to the flattened bush, they found a pair of eyeglasses, which they collected as evidence. A pair of eyeglasses, prescription eyeglasses um, that were in a rocky area. Um, basically, if the balcony was up above where somebody would have either climbed down, fallen down, jumped down, um, and landed on the rocky area. That was about where the, the eyeglasses were. They collected other evidence inside the apartment, including several cigarette butts and a toothbrush, and the FBI laboratory in Virginia compared the DNA from those items to the DNA of Amina and Sarah and determined that the DNA was most likely the biological fathers. However, they still hadn't found him yet, yes. He was still on the streets, but three years later, nevertheless, in 2020, in August of 2020, the police began a 24 hour surveillance on a home in Justin, Texas. They observed Islam and Yasser's brother, Yasin, entering and exiting the home and the shadow of another man inside the home after the two men had left. After a week of surveillance, the FBI obtained a search warrant and arrested Yasser on August 26th of 2020. And on that same day in a nearby town, they also arrested his son, Islam, who was 32 at the time, and Yasser's brother, Yasin, who was 59, and charged them both with concealing a person from arrest. Now, even though Yasser was indicted on capital murder charges, the state did not go after the death penalty, and his trial began on August 2nd of 2022. Yasser argued through a translator that he was not present during the slayings. Y'all want to hear what his story was? He said that he took his two beautiful daughters on a taxi cab ride that evening, and he said that there was a threat following him, and that made him leave his two daughters because he thought that this threat was following them because they wanted to get him. So more or less in an act of, you know, bravery for his daughters, he separated himself from the two girls and maybe the threat ended up getting the girls. I don't know. It's absolutely ridiculous. And after three hours of deliberation, he was found guilty. The judge sentenced him to life in prison without the possibility of parole. And Yasser is incarcerated at the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, McConnell's unit in Bee County, Texas. Now in January of 2021, the girl's brother, Islam, uh, Yasser's son, ended up pleading guilty to the charges that he got. And in April of 2021, he was sentenced to 10 years years in federal prison. Now, Yasser's brother, on the other hand, Yasin, he actually said that he hated his brother and he had no idea that he did what he did 
to Amina and Sarah. He said that he would have never have helped his brother had he had known what he actually did. However, in February of 2021, he was also found guilty and he was sentenced to 12 years in prison for helping Yasser and concealing him after he did what he did. They did end up making a documentary about this called The Price of Honor. And in the documentary, they basically insinuate or say that they believe that this was like an honor killing because the girls were dating American men and it was a shame to the family. Like, absolutely heartbreaking and sad. The mother did end up testifying in Yasser's trial and she pointed at him and said that he was the devil. I guess I just kind of want to say that if you are in a situation, male or female, you have a partner that's mistreating your children or even mistreating you in front of your children because that is, that's a ripple effect too. I, I really truly beg of you guys. I really truly beg of you to reach out for help to somebody that you can trust and get out of that situation, especially get your children out of the situation. On a positive note though, Amina's boyfriend, Joseph, and Joseph's mother um, really just showed how much they cared for Amina and the girls. And Joseph felt like it, he was like Romeo and Juliet with her. He loved her so much. And he also felt like Amina died for him because if she would have just told her dad who Joseph was, her dad would have probably went after him instead of her. And so I do think that that was sweet how much he, he really did love her. So have y'all heard about this case? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Other than that, I love you guys and I'll see y'all in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.